There's been a lot of talk in the boxing world uh, this last week regarding Derek Chisora and David Hayes' brawl over in Germany, uh, which was a shame because it overshadowed uh, a valiant effort on De Derek Chisora's part, so I thought that was a, a big shame. But um, regarding the actual incident, I thought I'd give my opinion on the subject. I run a boxing page on Facebook called No Holds Barred and um, I talk to a lot of people each week, uh, I've spoken to some boxers and uh, we've discussed the matter uh, in great depth and it seems people are around 50-50 on the matter on uh, who was to blame, uh, whether it was good for boxing or bad for boxing etc. So I've made a few notes and um, I've thought about my opinion on the subject. Um, at the moment I'd say I'm probably sitting on the fence. I'd say I'm probably 50-50 good and bad for boxing. Um, I've made a few notes so I'll, I'll read some of them out. Uh, we've already discussed this on fa Facebook so people watching on Facebook are probably already have heard these uh, these uh, ish these um, examples. Um, I think we could say it was has been very good for boxing in the sense that um, David Hay could possibly come out of retirement now. Um, he's been retired now for what is it about uh, nearly a year. Um, it's created a lot of excitement in the heavyweight division, which has been um, very, you know, I wouldn't say poor because I, I I don't think it is, but it's been. Um, in many people's opinion quite a boring division for quite some time now um, it could create although I don't think it will it could create a huge mega clash between Britain arguably Britain's two best boxes um, best heavyweight boxes right now in Derek Chisora and David Hay although I don't think that will happen and the Hay camp have already said it won't happen um, we could also say uh, it has turned the British heavyweight scene into, <laughs> some people might say into a joke, but I think it's more likely that it's turned the British heavyweight scene into the most exciting heavyweight scene in the world right now. I mean, um, in Europe, in like, uh, the continent of Europe, um, over on the continent we have uh, quite a few good prospects, quite a few good, big, strong uh, European heavyweights, but I wouldn't, wouldn't really go as far as saying it's that exciting, uh, and it's dominated by the Klitschko's who dominate the world scene as well. Uh, over in America, we have some heavy hitting heavyweights, some um, young prospects who, according to American fans I talk to, don't believe they're going to go that far. But whether they go far or not, you know, we're talking about excitement here, and they could bring a lot of excitement to the domestic scene, continental scene, even world scene. But when you take everything into account, I think the British heavyweight scene is probably the best in the world right now. It has the most excitement, the most intrigue, the biggest characters, and probably the best matched fights. Whether any of them go on to become world champions is another matter, and one which I don't think is very important. Uh, if we're just talking on issues of excitement, I think it's probably the best in the world. So it's certainly, the Hey Chisora Brawl has certainly added some extra intrigue onto what is already a, a very good division. I mean, we have uh, Tyson Fury, very good boxer to watch, might not go on to become world champion, who cares, not really that important. Certainly exciting to watch, never know what's going to happen. We have another giant in David Price. Um, again, some people say he's got a questionable chin, he's certainly got a lot of power. Um, some people say Tyson Fury ducked him, which I think is wrong, because I don't think you can duck someone and then, you know, aim for a world title fight, which I think he will eventually get. He did beat Derek Chisora, after all. Um, uh, also, I mean, the British title, the Lonsdale belt, is a very prestigious uh, title, and although Tyson Fury... Um, vacated obviously to uh, to not uh, fight against his uh, mandatory in David Price I don't think it was really ducking the both guys have had a dozen fights each well Tyson Fury's had a couple more uh, than David Price and I just don't think it's a good fight for either guy at this stage in their career in in America we wouldn't expect Seth Mitchell and um, 
uh, uh, Joe Hanks to fight right now. So why would we expect um, Derek, um, Tyson Fury and David Price to fight right now? I think it's a, it's a double standard which exists in boxing. I think it's a shame. Um, another example, James DeGale and George Groves fighting. We would never expect um, Andre Durrell and Andre Ward to fight after a dozen fights, which they haven't. And they're now, you know, a dozen fights further on into their career and still haven't fought. So I think the British boxing scene and British fans are probably a little bit too harsh on their boxers uh, because of the pr prestige of the uh, Lonsdale belt. Which I think is a shame because the Lonsdale belt is the oldest in the world and one of the uh, most um, prestigious and respected. So I think it's a shame um, that, you know, uh, her, we can force two young boxers into the ring a little bit too early in their career, but it all makes for a, an exciting um, uh, landscape. Um, and again, with the Chisora Hay thing, uh, it, it's probably brought new fans to the uh, scene. Um, you know, uh, boxing is after all uh, about fighting and a lot of people are interested in that sort of thing. So it might attract the wrong fans, but I think it has attracted fans nonetheless. And it's got people talking about the heavyweight division, which is something that hasn't happened in a long time. So on the plain devil's advocate here, on the good side, I think there's plenty to come out of such a brawl. Also, I think we shouldn't forget the fact that these sort of brawls have happened several times in the past, at least a dozen I can think of. You know, we've got uh, Bent and Hyde, we've got uh, Rackman and Lewis, Fraser Ali, um, Bo and um, Gonzalez, was that his name? Or Rodriguez? I can't remember his name now. Yeah, um, so we've got um, plenty of things. I think at, I'll, I'll jump onto the devil's advocate on the bad side now and start off with, I think this uh, incident was the worst of the lot, definitely. I think it was the worst brawl that's happened, uh, mainly because it resulted in uh, one of them, Derek Chisora, threatening to shoot uh, the other guy, David Hay. So I think that is going a bit too far. But on the other hand, Bernard Hopkins did say he was going to kill Jean Pascal. I think those were the words he said. So it's not something we're not used to in boxing. I don't think you should threaten to kill someone and I don't think you should threaten to shoot someone. And the problem with doing that, for example in this case, the problem with threatening to shoot someone, and I'm sure he won't, but you know, I think that's obvious, is it does become a social issue and that means that the authorities have to get involved. So I think that's ridiculous, uh, having to get authorities involved in what should be a sporting event. So that's the first bad thing to say. Uh, also, it's a, bo it's a sport. Boxing is a sport. It's uh, a dedicated sport. It's uh, full of great athletes. It's a professional sport. And also, it doesn't need to be dragged through the mire like this, considering that the vast majority of boxers are nothing like this. Most boxers are very friendly, uh, easygoing guys, working class people, you know, very... Um, uh, very nice individuals and there's certainly nothing like that so and even those boxers who do you know give it their you know uh, put their big gob out there most of them aren't actually like that most of them are actually very friendly so i think that i think this has uh made boxing look like what a lot of people think it is which is just a barbaric sport of people punching each other which it isn't um boxing doesn't need fans tuning in who just want to see fight so I think that's wrong this isn't fight club you know this isn't fight club these aren't a bunch of you know um, you know rednecks these are in you know intelligent people a lot of but Nathan cleverly has a degree in maths so they are uh, very um, some of them are very intelligent people so I don't think um, fans tuning in just to see two people smash each other's heads in is really what we need uh, boxing does great things in the community. It gets people off of the street. It gets um, young boys who just want to act like a little bunch of hoodlums. It gets them acting more um, positively. It gets them thinking more intelligently. It gets them respecting people. It gets them respecting authority. Um, I read once, I think it was in Glasgow, I think I read a story about a really um, tough neighbourhood. I think it was Glasgow. Uh, where um, the crime rate uh, plummeted 
by something like 50% over a few months after a boxing gym was brought into the neighbourhood, because obviously, uh, you know, the little hoodlums uh, had something better to do with their time rather than hang out on the street and swear. So I think boxing's very good for that as well, and also it uh, promotes discipline and uh, good health, um, and uh, just overall, uh, it's a very good sport. It's a very good sport, and it's my favourite sport. Um, also, I think from the British scene, I think a lot of people have been saying things like um, it's been bad for British boxing, which I wholeheartedly disagree with. Some people have said that um, it's brought shame on the British Isles and it's made uh, British boxing look ridiculous, which is absolute nonsense. I don't understand that comment because there's 60 million people in Britain and this is only two of them. And they weren't even in Britain, they were abroad, which is actually worse. You know, I, I think if you're going to act like a hoodlum, at least do it in your, you know, in your own bedroom. Don't have to take it abroad, you look like a yob. So in that sense, it's been very bad. But overall, I don't know where I am. I think I'm sitting on the fence because from a selfish consumer point of view, I want to see Derek Chisora and David Hay clash in the ring. That's what I want to see. And I think a lot of fans do. So from a selfish point of view and a consumer point of view, I would definitely watch that. Uh, I also want to see the winner of that fight, Vladimir Klitschko. Or, or Vitaly, but preferably Vladimir because Chisora has already fought Vitaly. Maybe even Chisora fights Vladimir, win or lose, and David Hay fights Vitaly, win or lose. I don't know, something like that. Um, so, uh, I, so I'm on the good side in that sense. On the bad side, I think it's ridiculous um, people fighting like that, like a bunch of yobbos out in public. Uh, I think um, they've embarrassed themselves. Uh, I agree with um, Vitaly's, uh, Vitaly and Vladimir's manager, uh, who said, you know, they're never going to um, be invited back to Germany again. And then he said, um, they're not going to deal with British fighters anymore. So I think that's a shame. If it does cost British fighters an opportunity to go over to Germany to fight, especially for a world title, I think that's disgraceful. But I think that's also disgraceful on his part as well, not just on Hay and Chisora's, because I think that's wrong to uh, accuse all British boxers of being, you know, a bunch of uh, maniacs. So in that sense, I think there's a, you know, but that's a double standard that we're used to in boxing. You know, everyone makes up the rules. The IBF, the, the IBF have their rules, the WBC has their rules, and the WBA makes up the rules as they go along. You know, they don't have any. Um, so all of that. Uh, so overall, I think I'm sitting on the fence because I think it's bad and it's good, um, but I think it's certainly created a lot of buzz in the heavyweight division, which, let's be honest, there wasn't any since Lennox Lewis left. I think the last great heavyweight fight was between Lennox Lewis and Vitaly Klitschko, and that was, you know, taken at very short notice, and, um, you know, neither guy, well, especially Lennox Lewis, was hardly in the best shape of his career. So overall, I can see why some people are saying it's very bad, some people are saying it's very good, um, and I think you'd be right, whichever you decide, whether you want to um, sit on the fence, say it's good or say it's bad. So um, I'm probably going to be uh, making more videos like this in the future. Uh, I hope my webcam looks okay, because I think it's a bit naff. Uh, so I hope this video comes out okay, I hope you can hear me. Um, I don't know how to edit anything, so I've absolutely no idea how to edit, so it's just going to go out as I filmed it. Uh, and if you want to catch my opinions on other subjects, you can uh, catch me on Facebook on my boxing page called No Holds Barred. Uh, you can catch me on my blog, which I set up this week. And I'll be doing more uh, videos for YouTube on this channel, so um, keep uh, me in mind. So I will... Uh, add all of my sites at the bottom of this video and you can check them out. Thank you very much and my name's Ryan by the way. Okay, ta-da.